apologies ahead of time as usual for my terrible pronunciation. <laughs> Before we start this video, a large thank you to Andrew, Jesse, Agile, a name I cannot pronounce. Thank you for the support, my man. AJ, Heavenly Dog, Saj, Serial, and Loic for their support on Patreon. I sincerely hope you guys enjoy the video. And a special thank you to Mike Harden Games for their immense support of this channel on Patreon. Hello guys, and today we're going to start our item-based action system, which barely won the vote uh, post in the Discord. So, if we go over to our input handler here now, and we look at the handle combat inputs, you'll see that if we hit the RB input, we follow the player combat manager to the handle RB action, and this decides an action based on the weapon type right here. If it's a melee weapon, we perform a melee action, and if it's magic action, we perform a magic action. Well, we can make that a whole lot simpler, because we can actually place the actions on the weapons themselves. So we don't have to do this check, and all we have to do is say, play the action on the weapon, like specifically one line of code. So we're going to do that. Uh, this is what I've done in the solo project here. So if we click on the weapon here, I'll just show you. This is our weapon right now in our project. And this is my project that I'm working on with a couple other people. And uh, you can see I've already have it done. If I scroll down here, you can see weapon actions. And uh, for this one, the tap RB is a light attack. The tap RT is a heavy attack. Uh, the hold RT is a charge attack, etc., etc. Now, you don't need this many actions. I have taps and holds for mostly everything and releases for one even as well. Um, if you want to, you can add them. But I have a bit more... Uh, done in my project aside from just the regular Dark Souls framework. It's a bit of its own, obviously. So let's start by actually, I'm going to organize all this real quick. There we go. Um, let's go to the items folder here now, and let's create a new folder inside of it. I'm just going to call this folder item actions, and this is under scripts and then under items. So in the item actions folder, let's make the base class for all this logic, and I'm going to call that uh, appropriately named item action. And now we're going to open this up. We're going to get rid of the start and update function. I'm going to put in my namespace, which is SG, as is per tradition. And then I'm going to erase the start and update function. And I am going to give this a, um, a an empty, overridable virtual void. So let's just call this public virtual void um, perform action. Very simple. Now, we're going to need a lot of logic. The player manager is, is used. Uh, let's call it player manager and then obviously the the player combat manager is used and then obviously the player animator is used but now see you see this is going to get really annoying to type out so what i'm going to do instead and it's what i did on my solo project too is from now on i'm going to reference all player attachments and by that i mean the extra scripts from the player manager script so all we're going to call is our player manager and instead of calling it player manager we're going to call it player that way if we need to reference our animator manager we'll say player dot player animator manager our combat manager, player, dot player, combat manager. And it even looks nice in the naming convention itself. So now that we have that done, we don't need anything in here, but we have to make this a scriptable object. Okay. We're not ever going to use this class, but we're going to use classes that derive from this class. This will just be the base class, which has no logic in its own. Um, but everything that we create will branch off of this. So next, let's go to our weapon item. And we need to support using these new item actions. So let's make a new header down here. <clears throat> And let's call this weapon actions or uh, item actions rather because it might not be a weapon specifically if you want to use them for other things. And I'm going to make a public item action. And I'm going to call this one, um, let's call it tap RB. Actually hold RB because we need that for backstabs as well and critical attacks. We'll put that one first. And then I'll make another one here and we'll call that one um, tap RB. And let's make a hold and a tap for every input. You, you're probably not going to use them all. And you're especially not going to use them on every weapon unless you're doing something way out of the realm of what Souls did. Um, but every weapon, aside from bows and ranged weapons, is going to have a hold RB for your, your backstab. But the ranged weapons probably won't have that. Um, then let's make a hold LB and a tap LB. And a hold LT and RT and a tap RT and LT. So basically, you don't have to use all these because some weapons might not have these um, these abilities. But this really gives you some modularity with your items because you can make it so one item's LB action is to block when another one is to cast a spell. And you can really make it, you can even expand upon the code in, in say, a spellcaster action. You can say, if there's no spell equipped, instead of attempting to cast a spell, just block. So and it makes the code look a lot neater too because performing these actions just simply calls the weapon and then runs the action on the slot. Okay, now that we have that done, let's actually make our first action. And the code we wrote before is still very much useful. We're just going to have to refit it and move it around, essentially. But I'm also going to fix a, a bug while I'm here with the combos, because right now, if you, I don't think you can combo from a heavy to a light or a light to a heavy, so I'm going to fix it so we can as well. 
Now inside the item action scripts, let's or folder story, let's make our first script and call light attack action. Uh, and as the name suggests, this will be handling our light attack, which also handles our running attack right now and our light attack combo. So let's make our namespace minus SG and let's make this derive from the item action scripts. And now we got to play detective and we got to look back at our code and see where we're actually defining this logic to because we can salvage it and just move it to here. Um, so let's go to our player combat manager. I believe that's where it is all housed right now. And if we're going to hit the right bumper, that's how we handle our right or our light attack. Let's let's go and see where that leads us. So handle right bumper action. Well, we know we're going to need to erase the hand IK because that resets it. So we're going to take that with us right away and put that right at the top. That's of primary use. Oops. First, we have to call our uh, our overridable logic and put that in there. So I'm going to call public override perform action. And I'm going to erase the base and just put this in here. And I'm going to type player dot and then we're going to use that. I need to go make that public though. So let's go to the player manager and let's make all of our attachment scripts. Um, let's make them all public. Those scripts that actually affect our player's logic. And we're probably going to have to add more in here. And even on my solo project, I have it so every time you call another script, you reference the player manager first. So there's only the player manager being called another scripts. Now that we have that, we can actually erase this because we don't need to wonder if we're using t weapon type A, B, C, or D. Uh, and let's just keep the perform RB melee action here and the magic action so we can inspect the logic further. But right now, let's go to that. So let's highlight it and let's come down. There we go. Okay, so perform RB melee action. So we're going to have to assign we're using a right hand. We know that's true because that's how we open our damage collider. We need to know we're using the right hand weapon. So, and since this is a, a light attack though, we're going to change this in the future. It's not always going to be the right hand. So I'm going to leave that there for now, but we'll adjust that in the next video. Um, now, Let's go down here and we can copy all this logic. This is all going to be the same. Now let's erase that. But in the next video, we're going to make it because just because using a light attack now doesn't always mean it will be from the right hand. So now let's see. We're going to change this to player. So if we are sprinting, we're going to handle a running attack. That's good. We don't have that in here right now, but that's fine. Uh, let's change this to player. If the player can do a combo, we're going to change the... Okay, so we need to make the input handler here public. So let's go over here and do that. It's going to change this to public. It's going to be a lot of moving this around, as you can imagine. This is this is definitely a refactor, but we're not going to lose anything. We're just going to we can do this all in probably about twenty minutes, and then the others in the next episode will be a lot easier to do. So we'll say player dot input handler. That looks good. Now we don't have the handle light attack combo here yet. That's fine. We'll get to that. Let's just make all this player first. There we go. That looks fine. Okay. All right. So. Player dot player inventory manager. I think we have to call that because we don't have our player inventory manager. We have the effects manager though. Yes, that's fine. Let's go back to our player manager again, and we're going to declare a variable of type player inventory manager. We'll call that on awake, and then we'll use that from the script uh, light attack action. So as you can see, there's a bit of a setup that's going to be required for this, but in the end, the payout is is very much so worth it. Everything is so much more clean. And the ability to drop actions onto your weapon as you assign it is awesome. We're still going to get to use the weapon types like straight sword and stave and stuff because we can use those for how we choose to decide our damage animations in the future and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So now that we have that there, let's put in player dot player inventory manager. Put in player right here. Dot player inventory manager. Looks fine. Okay. Now let's actually find these functions that we're actually referring to here. And here is handle light attack. We need that one. Let's do this one first. We'll do one at a time. Let's drop this in here as a uh, private function. Uh, why is that giving me grief? Oh, I think I dropped it outside of the brackets of my uh, class. Yes, I did. So I'm just going to copy that and put it back here. There we go. Okay, so we need to call the, I think the player stat manager is there. Yes, that's there. We need to call the player weapon slot manager, though I know that's not there for a fact, but I'll put this here for now. Um, this is fine. We also need to call the player combat manager because we're keeping our, our animation list there and our last attack reference is also there. So we'd say player dot player combat manager, which I'm going to type in right now. Actually, let's go over here and uh, yeah, I'm just going to put this here and we'll call it player dot player combat manager. And I, you can copy this whole line and we can paste that down here too. So this will be player dot put copy right to the dot and paste it here and paste it on the other attacks as well. But we're going to call that first. So 
Let's go over here and anywhere you want, just make two variables, one of type player weapon slot manager and the other of type, I love this autofill, player combat manager. This this whole pressing tab thing to autofill out of the variables is so awesome. Such a great Visual Studio update. So down here, let's reference both of those and call them as get component uh, because they sit on the same game object, obviously, as our player manager since they're refactored a while ago. And let's do the same thing with our player combat manager. Looks good. Now we can use those in here. And we, oh, right, we need to, uh, we need to actually pass our, um, our player variable because this is outside of our function. So let's put a comma here and let's make it so we need to play, uh, pass a player manager. And then right here, let's just put a comma and pass the player and we should be good to go. Looks good. This looks good. There we go. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward so far for most of you, I'm sure. Um, this is basically performing the exact same logic. I'm just going to reference these animations here. Uh, it's performing the exact same logic, but right now it's condensed to this one little scriptable object that we can throw onto our item, which is so much nicer. Um, why is this giving me grief? Oh, right. The animations are probably set to private, so let's set those to public. We can still keep all the animation references on our player combat manager, so that way every, every item action script can reference them because... We're going to have the light attack action, the heavy attack action. In the future, we're doing charging attacks, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that will be a thing. So we can just make all of these public, and we'll be good to go. Oh, and by the way, for any of you who hasn't noticed, the um, archery animation pack is now live. We're waiting for it to be approved by Unity. But if you want to keep checking back on the uh, on the Discord, it will be up and available for $30 as soon as it's released. And it contains a whole set of animations for movement, all the attacks, et cetera, et cetera. Check out the video if you want to see more. So after we make all of these public, uh, we can go back then, and that should no longer give us grief. I'm just going to make this. We're not, we're not using weapon art yet, I don't think, except for parry, but I'll make that public too. Okay, so yeah, that looks fine. So next, we need to do the running attack. So let's go to the player combat manager. Let's copy that. I think it's down here. We can erase this now. By the way, the perform RB melee action. Keep the magic one there because we're going to investigate that in, in a future video, probably the next one. Um, handle running attack. There we go. Let's go right... All right, let's go down here. Handle running attack. And let's do the same thing before. So we have to pass a player manager variable to this. We'll call it player. And let's just say player in front of all these variables right here. Okay, player dot player stats manager. If your stamina is at return. Um, we can actually call that. I'm looking back at this now. This is after I've actually recorded this. I'm going to do this in a couple of videos. But we can actually make sure we have that stamina check way before we get to this point. Um, we can do it right at the beginning of coming into this this item action, if you understand what I'm saying. Instead of calling it in every individual sub-function, we can put it right at the start of this. If you have no stamina, you should not even be able to check for uh, an attack action. So I'll adjust that in the next video as well. Um, let's put, yeah, let's we're gonna place our player.player.com manager here, so we're referencing these animations again. Player.player.animation.manager. It's really just a game of linking up all the functionality with the player manager at this point. Um, then up here, this isn't working, so let's actually drag in the handle light combo uh, function. And this one is the one that has a problem now. It's, it's not working as intended, so we're going to fix that too. I think all of them are bugged in their own way because you can't go from heavy to light. So both the heavy and light are bugged. You want to, In Dark Souls, if you hit the combo attack button, for example, if you're doing a heavy attack and you hit the combo button, you can combo into a light attack. But it's always the first attack of the light attack chain. So we're going to do that right now too. Um, we're going to say player. I'm going to pass the player manager again, as is usual with the other functions, and uh, let's pass the player here, or uh, use the player to reference the input manager. But we're going to make an if statement. Um, we're going to say, we're going to check for two-handing, and then we're going to do one thing. So we're going to say if player is two-handing, and then if not, we're going to do another. So let's do that. Let's just go and paste this, or copy this rather, and delete it and put it right here. And let's put the two-hand logic here. So basically, you still can't combo with a heavy attack. Um, but it's always going to combo into the first attack of the light attack chain. So it will always be light attack 01. So there's a very simple way to do this. We're going to say, first, let's put in player.player.combat.manager on all these animations, so they're not giving us grief. And let's place player in front of player animator manager, just essentially getting rid of all the errors here. Uh, for some reason, too, we're not calling, we're not updating our last attack after we did this. So I think that was something we forgot to, I forgot to do, rather. So we'll do that, too. Um... Now, next, so we know if that our, if our first attack is a two-handed light attack 01, then it has to be uh, a two-handed light attack 02 next. If it's any other attack, 
So if it's two hand light attack O2, or if it's a heavy attack O1, or a heavy attack O2, then it's going to be a two handed light attack O1. So basically this else statement here will make it so that even if we're performing a heavy attack, we can still combo into a light attack when we're done, or when we're able to combo rather. And we'll do the same thing down here with this, but instead of obviously having a two handed variant, we're gonna have a one handed variant because this is if we're not one handing, or not two handing rather. And now that we have that done, let's actually, I don't know why I didn't do that. It must have just slipped my mind. Let's update our last attack. So player player comment manager last attack is equal to the attack we just performed, obviously, which will be in this case two hand light attack 01 or two, sorry. And then below that, it will be two hand light attack 01. So you can copy that, paste it real quick. And then below that, it will be the one hand attack um, 02 and the one hand light attack 01. Okay. Now, I believe this should work as intended. So I'm going to check this out in a sec. Sorry, I have a bit of the sniffles here, guys. I think I'm allergic to something I wash my clothes with. Anyway, let's go to, uh, where are we going next? Yeah, this, this player effects manager, this is not getting called for your return. So let's bring that right to the top. So put this right here. That should be just right away. We're going to reuse effects regardless. And in the next video, I'm going to put that, I'm going to put that stamina check at the top too. I will remember to do that. I'm going to write it down my notes right now. Uh, let's make a create asset menu. And let's make a menu name. Let's make it so we are going to call it, we're going to start off by saying item actions. And then we'll put a slash and sub menu and we'll call it light attack action. And obviously our light attack is going to chain with a running attack too because you have to do the light attack button while you're running to it. Um, so let's go in here now and go to our player and let's open up the input handler. I'm just going to test just this one. So we can do this by saying right here on their handle comment inputs. If RB input, just say player inventory um, dot right weapon dot perform RB action. I think it's tap RB action in this case, which, yeah, it will be tap because it's not the hold. Hold will be the look for a critical deck. So let's do that. Perform action. And we're going to pass the player manager. And that's it. And we're good to go. Now, if I create this action, and the good news is, like, you only got to create the one. This one action is obviously, it's you can use it across every light attack action, like, what I'm trying to say is a sword's light attack is the same as an axe's light attack. It uses the same logic, just different animations. So it can still use this one action. You only need this one light attack action. So I'm going to create um, item actions, light attack action. Let's call this light attack action. Good to go. And let's go to our sword. We'll test it with that and we'll drag it in onto the tap RB action. And now if I go to my player. I'm just going to equip a sword. I think he's a bow equipped right now. So I'm going to change that to a sword. We go into the game. If I press RB, boom, there we go. I can combo two. And if I run now, I think I can do a running attack. Yes, I can. So as you can see, that all works perfectly as intended. And it is a whole lot cleaner. So now we can basically eradicate most of the player combat manager in terms of logic. Well, not eradicate, move it around, make it look a lot cleaner. And now you have the added bonus of being able to say, like, you can make your offhand uh, weapon perform a light attack when you press LB instead of blocking and you could do things like a power stance with that so you could change it depending on the weapon or you could change it with a button it adds a whole lot of modularity and a whole lot of customization it's really exciting like you could do a whole lot with this kind of stuff so in the next video I'm going to basically keep adding under the system we're going to go over um, the rest of the item actions it's probably going to take a couple lessons obviously because this is very dense there's a whole lot of stuff we got to do and I don't want to uh, to do it all in one sitting because it would probably be about a I'd say about an hour, but we'll get through it. I'm thinking maybe two more episodes at max. I'm also noticing a couple bugs too that I overlooked. So I'm going to make notes of those. And we're going to fix those too, because um, I also have a giant housekeeping episode coming up. Where we're going to clean up everything. I want to make everything nice and polished. So on that note, if you guys did like the video, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment. It does appease the YouTube algorithm gods, and it does jangly help my series out so much. And as usual, if you are feeling like a super champion, check out my Patreon below. I will see you guys in the next episode.